New this morning, police in Aurora need information in identifying a suspected shooter. Late last night, officers were called to East Pacific Circle between Iliff and East Jewel. They found an apartment with the door open, lights on. Inside, they found a man who had been shot. He was pronounced dead at the scene. Officers canvassed the area to look for evidence and talk to witnesses, but as of now, they do not have any suspect information to share. Anyone that does have any information is asked to call Crime Stoppers. That number at the bottom of your screen, it is 720-913-7867. Right now, police are still looking for the person responsible for killing a 19-year-old on Valentine's Day just outside the downtown aquarium. Daisy and Salazar was killed on that day. Police say at about 3 in the afternoon, someone fired shots out of a car, and they believe it was a targeted shooting. Dacian's parents are now speaking up in hopes that someone will help the police solve their son's killing. For me, it's not Valentine's Day. That's my baby's day. They took, um, they took him from me, and I just won't be the same. They say there are no updates and that the case is still under investigation. Crime Stoppers is offering up to a $2,000 reward for any information that leads to an arrest. New this morning, former President Trump has kept his primary streak alive. Both he and President Biden won their respective party primary races in Michigan Tuesday. The Republican primary race between the former president and challenger Nikki Haley wasn't even close. With 99% of precincts in Michigan reporting, Trump won nearly 70% of the vote. Haley received about 26%. In a call to the Michigan Republican Party, Trump said he is ready for November. We have to win on November 5th. And we're going to win big. We have the worst president in the history of our country, the most incompetent and the most corrupt president. And we can't let this continue. President Biden didn't mince words about the Republican frontrunner in a statement he issued after the Michigan primary win, saying Donald Trump, quote, is threatening to drag us even further into the past as he pursues revenge and retribution. With Michigan now behind them, the candidates are now looking to Super Tuesday. It's less than a week out and encompasses the presidential primaries of more than a dozen states, including Colorado, and was our state where Nikki Haley was one to hope to drum up support. She spoke to a crowd at Wings over the Rockies in Centennial on Tuesday. Haley faces an uphill battle in Colorado, as she has in every other primary so far. The Colorado GOP endorsed Trump back in January, despite party bylaws requiring party leadership to to stay neutral in the primary. Haley said she never reached out to the state party after that endorsement. This is a pattern that we're seeing that's happening across the country. I mean, we are seeing a split in the Republican Party where it has become more about Donald Trump than it's become about the country. No current elected Republican appeared at Tuesday's rally in support of Nikki Haley. She has also admitted that she voted for Trump twice before, though in her stump speech on Tuesday, she said chaos follows Trump and Republicans need someone who can win. Right now, tens of thousands of people in Australia are waiting for word on whether their homes are okay. Around 30,000 evacuations were ordered due to a wildfire that's been burning for nearly a week now. It's already destroyed six homes, and officials are afraid the weather may push the flames even closer to more neighborhoods. In fact, they say these are some of the worst fire conditions Australia has seen in years. Back in the U.S., we're getting an up-close look at the wildfires burning in the Texas panhandle, perhaps too close. Fire crews shared this video as they drove through the midst of the Smokehouse Creek fire. This thing is burning out of control and threatening several panhandle towns. More than 300,000 acres or around 468 square miles have burned since this fire began on Monday. This is a look at that fire from the air. Several towns threatened by flames have ordered evacuations. Texas Governor Greg Abbott has declared a disaster in 60 counties in his state. He also activated additional state emergency services to support fire crews. From wildfires to wild winds and a look this morning at the damage tornadoes left behind near Chicago. Strong storms moved through that area Tuesday. The National Weather Service hasn't confirmed exactly how many tornadoes that storm spawned just yet, but weather experts say at least five were reported. So was hail the size of golf balls in some areas there. Right now, there have been no reports of injuries from the storms.
And one thing you want to know about our weather, a live satellite picture shows mostly clear skies across the state today. So plenty of sunshine to go around and over the northern front range from Aurora all the way up to Greeley. Sunny skies and temperatures in the low to mid 50s. Ed, thank you. We want to get you right back out to Sky 9 over that westbound 76 crash we're following at Sheridan. We are down to only one left lane open and moving. Police and emergency crews blocking off that right lane and right shoulder. On the right hand side of the screen there, you can see there's a vehicle off the roadway. That's what they need to work to get fully cleared out. It's in the grassy area right now. This is causing some serious delays. Your drive on westbound 76 between I-25 and I-70 is now up to almost 20 minutes. All right, Erica, thank you. New this morning, lawmakers are looking to update a bill that involves phones while uh, phone use, excuse me, while driving for everyone, not just for teens. So if you are caught, you could be looking at a very pricey ticket. 90s reporter Brianna Fernandez joins us live from the state capitol this morning. Brianna, this is not the first time that lawmakers have actually tried to pass a bill like this. Yeah, that's exactly right. Good morning, Jordan. So we know lawmakers tried to pass a similar bill back in 2022, but it failed. But with the number of traffic fatalities that we're seeing out on the road, especially here in Denver, lawmakers are hopeful that this time around it will be different. So right now here in the state of Colorado, anyone 18 and under is not allowed to use cell phones at all while driving. So this includes phone calls, texting or even scrolling through social media. And now with this proposed hands free bill, it would ban anyone from using their cell phones while driving unless Unless they're using a hands free accessory. So it does have exceptions like if there's an emergency or if your car is parked and some of the bill's sponsors like Democratic State Senator Chris Hansen, he says that distracted driving has become a major problem on our roadways. We've got to put our phones down. Um, uh, pedestrians, bicyclists, other motorists are in danger uh, when people are texting and driving or holding their phone in their hand while they're trying to drive. We've got to reduce that distraction to make our roads safer. So right now that bill, that proposed bill is going into the second hearing. So there's still a lot of steps before it fully gets approved if it does get approved. Now, if it does pass, so we know that lawmakers say that there's going to be some violations. So your first offense, it's going to be $75 and two points towards your license. Unless you have a hands free accessory, then that violation will be waived. Jordan, it's certainly going to change the way a lot of people out there drive. Brianna, thank you. In Washington today, Senate Democrats will try to pass legislation to protect in vitro fertilization. It comes out of the ruling in Alabama that declared frozen embryos were considered children, raising concerns that mothers could be held liable for wrongful death if they destroy them. Lawmakers on both sides have been working to immediately pass legislation to protect IVF. Senate Democrats are going to push for the bill to be passed unanimously. Right now, we are two days away from a potential government shutdown. As we take a live look right now, at our nation's capital, lawmakers may have a solution to avoid it, at least for a few days. The plan has two stages. The four government agencies that could close after Friday would get another week of funding. That includes the Department of Transportation, Veterans Affairs, Agriculture and Energy, and HUD. The funding deadline for everything else would be March 22nd. House Speaker Mike Johnson says he is open to considering a deal. Today is the first day the House can vote on it since they're now back from recess.